Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sirsha, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today for our Q1 feature releases webinar. Um, in just a short moment, I'll be passing you over to my colleague, Neil McGough, uh, who is Lernosti's Director of Sales and Client Support. But first, I'm just going to run you through some general housekeeping points before we get started today. Um, so on joining the webinar, everyone has been automatically put on mute. Um, time has been allocated for your questions at the end of the webinar, so please ask anything um, through your designated question section of the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. And then for any unanswered or follow-up questions that you have, um, you can contact your designated uh, technical support um, address or else email us at marketing at .com. And finally, just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded and we will email the recording to everyone who's registered afterwards. Um, so thanks again for joining us today and I'll pass you over to Neil now. Great, thanks, Sirsha. And um, welcome everybody. Uh, great to great to speak to you all, and uh, hope you've all had a good winter since last time we've uh, we've done one of these feature webinars. So, for anybody who hasn't joined us on one of these before, the aim is just to run through uh, you know a quick recap of some of the stuff that we've released over the uh, over the last kind of three to four months. Quite often, you know, with the volume of uh, regular releases we uh, we here at Learnosity do. Uh, we, you know, it's good to recap and, and cover back over some of those ones that, uh, some of the highlights and some of the big features that you may not have noticed or may not have heard of yet. During this, we generally break it up into a couple of different sections. We kind of run through based off how we see the product pillars, you know, a little bit on authoring, uh, a section on assessment, analytics, um, and into a little bit of kind of future roadmap stuff. Uh, we'll start off generally with authoring. Um, run through kind of some uh, some updates with question type authoring pieces that have been added, uh, some areas around scoring where we've added extra pieces of functionality or, or additional scoring, some author API uh, kind of duplication workflow changes, which are really, really good, uh, some updates to, uh, to how we deal with video and where you can place and put video, a little bit of enhancement to, uh, to math auto scoring, uh, and on into some areas around assessment, uh, kind of responsive design changes we made to the assessment player, and also some changes we made, which we uh, which we commented on the roadmap section of the last uh, of the last webinar around how we've improved state management a little bit to make it a lot uh, a lot less error prone um, and really much more seamless and uh, and uh, simpler to use for you guys. So. Let's start off with a little bit, sorry, and also going into our going into roadmap afterwards and a couple of key points to hit there. We'll, we'll just kick off though straight into our authoring section to begin with. So the first area uh, we will go through is a couple of uh, small tweaks and enhancements to different question type authoring areas. Um, some big, some, some small, all kind of designed around either enhancing usability of the question type or else better coverage when it comes to specific areas of standards that these need to uh, these need to cover. The first area we have here is around line chart enhancements. Uh, one of the things we've done here is with the line chart question type, we've uh, we've made it so that you can also um, change points to uh, to be either plain circles or across. One of the reasons we we did this was we came across a number of different areas in. US K-12 st state standards, where it's specified very strictly that it had to be across, I think, particularly in the um, the Texas TEKS standards. Uh, so to allow you guys to better adhere to the to, to these standards in this case. Just to show you quickly where this, uh, where this functionality exists. If I go in to add a new question, if I go down to the charting section, into line charts, we can see by default, we're using points in this case. However, if we go down to the more options section here, we can see we have point style here. So you just need to change this to a cross. And very simply and easily, uh, we've switched to, switched to using that cross mechanism there. The next area we've made some changes around graph plotting. And again, this one comes from a bit of a standards led, led one. Uh, previously with graph plots, you would only be able to do points uh, on the X and Y axis as, uh, as numbers or, or as whole numbers or decimals. Uh, we've actually added the ability to be able to put those ticks into fractions or mixed fractions as well. So again, we can show this through kind of the, the 
author the author API. If we go to add a new question into our graphing questions here, and we'll just choose a standard graphing one. So this should be x and y axis there. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller just so it's easier to see as you guys are watching this. And we're gonna go down here to the section around tick distance and, uh, and how frequently they should, they should be used. So let's say we're gonna change here the tick distance to a half. We're gonna show ticks, all that kind of thing. And if we look here on this preview, we can now see that we're showing ticks at every half and we're using uh, fractions and mixed fractions to be able to do this. So again, this one comes from a bit of, a, a bit of a, an effort led uh, just around better compliance to a number of standards that we've seen around graph plotting questions or questions that could be very well answered with a graph in those areas. The next area we'll touch on a little bit is a couple of, uh, couple of scoring enhancements. The first one uh, is the ability to, to disable auto scoring uh, in questions that, that should be manually auto scored. This is one where uh, we've had a number of use cases on, of, around this over the last while. Uh, quite often with things like, for instance, graph plotting where there may be multiple answers or maybe more around to show your work kind of example. Uh, and previously we didn't have a specific mechanism to exclude those types of questions from auto scoring. Uh, so it kind of had to be a case of, well, it would still be auto scored, we had to treat it with score at zero. It could still then be incorrect and that kind of thing. So we wanted to, wanted to fix up that rough edge a little bit. Uh, this option can be found under the scoring section. I'll just again show you, show you in the same, uh, same piece here, let's take a look and go down to uh, this button here so we can enable auto scoring. So this is on by default, but it just means that you can turn that off. And then that this question, as it goes through all the Lernosity scoring, as it contributes to reports, um, as it comes out via the data API, this will be marked as a, as a non-auto scored question. So in the same way as an essay or audio recording or that kind of thing. So it just simplifies that workflow quite a lot. Uh, for any of those, you, for any of you using some of our item bank partners, they've they've kind of spearheaded a little bit a bit of this, uh, and um, and have started using this already. So I think some of you may already be aware of it. We've also added contains scoring to short text questions. The idea here to be to allow flex more flexible scoring for short text questions, so that an author can base the score off part of an answer or a word contained in an answer. Uh, if we look at this one again, let's go start with a new, a new item again. Uh, we'll go into our written and spoken section. And in our short text piece, we can have either exact match scoring. So for instance, the answer to this is going to be, the question is going to be, uh, <clears throat> what is the busiest airport in New York? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept anything that contains JFK in this. So using the any text containing bit, containing bit, this means that I would get full marks if I just wrote JFK. I'd also get full marks if I wrote JFK Airport, or uh, if I wrote New York JFK Airport within that as well. So it means that you can do you can do kind of a, a little bit more open scoring uh, and and make sure that you're not penalizing students incorrectly for uh, for short text answers. The next section is around some tweaks we've made to the author API uh, duplicate workflow. This kind of came out of a lot of feedback we got around duplication of passages. Originally, we had it so that when you went and duplicated an item, we would automatically share the passage uh, between the previous item and the new item, because quite often people wanted to use it, use passages in that manner. They wanted to be able to share them between between multiple pieces and have it that you, if you edit one passage, that would automatically fl flow through to the next one. The one problem that we started to see there was in cases where somebody had just used pa a passage for throwaway free text on that item, that obviously caused some problems. Uh, so what, we, what we've done now is we've added extra controls to be able to either warn the user that the passage is gonna be duplicated or else provide them with a dialogue option around whether or not they want to duplicate this. So, Again, what does that look like? There's two main things here. 
The first one is a slight change to the uh, the API settings in this case. We have a uh, an option here called duplicate duplicate shared passages true. If you're using the author site, you should contact us if you want us to turn this on. Uh, if you're using the author API, you can simply move up to the latest version of the author API and pass this this flag in as well. So let's go and we're going to create a uh, an item just with a test passage. And it's got some text here. And I can save that. And I'm going to go and duplicate this item now. And what you can see is when I'm duplicating, I'm, prevent, I'm presented with this dialog here, which tells me if it contains, it contains a passenger feature, you can choose to share and make a duplicate. So I can select that I want to duplicate it, or I can just simply not duplicate the passages. They'll be shared and click the duplicate button at that stage. So that just provides you guys with a little bit more flexibility around how you want to deal with that case. Video updates covers a couple of changes we made recently to uh, extending share, extending simple feature support to video and also increasing the size of videos that can be uploaded. Uh, previously, this was around five megabits, five megabytes as a, as a size. We, we have up, uh, updated this to 100 megabytes. Obviously, we would always say, you know, when it comes to size of videos and that kind of thing, it's important to be content aware and, uh, you know, kind of aware of the target market for your clients in that school districts are always, a, are always a fun one, especially if you're using very large file sizes, but you do have the option there. Um, as mentioned now, it's also included as in, in, the, um, uh, in the simple feature section here as well. So I can go into a multiple choice question and I can choose that I'm going to include, oops, sorry, wrong button. I can choose that I am going to add a simple feature and now alongside audio and calculator and protractor and ruler, I can select a video within this as well. So I can select a source of YouTube, Vimeo or host video. I can provide a source URL for that. I can give it a heading, particular size. So let's, let's just go to YouTube. Uh, let's search for uh, YouTube cat video. Let's find a quick one here. And apologies for the loud noises. And if we set that within that, we can now see that we have a cat video there ready to be used. It can be inserted into the question. We can see it in preview there, uh, embedded into the stimulus or even embedded into the into kind of the response area for certain question types. Uh, this works with uh, you know kind of a lot of the response fields that you can use. You can't, for instance, though, use it in things like uh, a drag and drop close question just because the tech, you know, kind of trying to get that in a way that's usable for students where they're um, dragging and dropping videos is, uh, is somewhat complex. Next up, just a quick math enhancement we'd like to cover as well. Uh, so this one well, is the additional new option to be able to treat E, the, var the variable E as Euler's number um, in math questions. So under Quiff Symbolic, you can now set that it'll override the, the default interpretation as, as scientific notification and uh, and use this lowercase e as Euler's number. We're going to move on to a few assessment changes we've recently made. Uh, the first one being around uh, around some responsive design enhancements we've made to the uh, the assessment wrapper. Part of this was to kind of get get to a stage where we're better handling. Uh, you know the size down and steps down to uh, to lower screen sizes just out of the box. So as assessments now size down, we'll automatically resize certain certain uh, elements. We'll we, we'll move around a couple of things to make this a lot smoother and a lot better. So let's look at this in a bit of detail and how this works. As you can see right now, in this case, when I start this assessment, I have you know, kind of all the on-screen elements that I, that I could possibly want within here. But this is going to take a lot. Once you get past a certain breakpoint, this is going to be a very, very difficult UI to use for uh, uh, for students. So let's just, uh, let's just resize this. Sorry, let's resize this now. And we'll see as we get smaller on the screen, Selectively UI elements start to uh, we, we remove the sidebar because it's quite difficult to use in those kind of cases 
we collapse down a couple of areas here. We provide a, uh, a swipe out menu that's inbuilt into this that overshadows everything else to provide proper access to those uh, those different choices, whichever ones were set in the uh, in the right hand menu here. And as we get down to very small screen sizes, we'll collapse the header and other elements as well to make sure that this works really nicely. Uh, so the aim here is to, to do a lot more out of the box to make your kind of your smaller screen or mobile experience a lot better. Uh, state management improvements. This is one that we discussed on the roadmap section previously. Uh, this is a, a technical change to uh, to allow the items API to better manage state out of the box rather than you having to pass us that it's, you know, this is the first time we've seen this test or, you know, we should resume this. Now, if we have seen this test before, we will automatically resume and load in student responses. Previously, what we do in this case would be to, to raise an error for your system to handle. Um, obviously, in those cases, pretty much what everybody was doing was just going and reloading the uh, reloading the assessment in the correct, um, correct mode when that error occurred. So this just means with Newer versions of the API, items API from 1.76 onwards will simply handle this uh, much more efficiently. So the main aim here is, you know, kind of as you guys get towards the back to school or start of academic year season uh, and student ramp up uh, picks up again, this should mean that, you know, kind of students will see potentially, for, you know, kind of fewer, uh, fewer errors in cases where there may have been errors or logic issues to manage some of this behavior before. Uh, another quick piece we've, we've added in here as well. This is just covering a, a, a quick change to, to the formula question types. Uh, so this is a, an extension to add spoken math accessibility for these. So all of the questions, uh, the question stimulus, you know, the interaction elements would have had RE labels on them before. The key area now is that as the student goes and enters uh, responses into the, uh, into the response boxes, We'll now use uh, our spoken math engine to auto-generate ARIA label text for that math, math answer in natural language. So it's just another enhancement to really make sure we're covering all of the accessibility boxes we possibly can and making this product as usable as possible for users with screen reader needs. Now we'll just run a little through a little bit through some uh, some upcoming roadmap features that we're uh, that we're looking at. Uh, the first one on this is a new report which is currently in development uh, around item scoring by tag by user. The idea with this report uh, is to provide a way to be able to, to do much more exploration around, uh, around student uh, kind of classroom, classroom and student scores by topic area or by learning outcomes or by whatever other tags you may want to use within this. It means that you can analyze and compare um, different results between a class of students. You can drill down more effectively. So think of our, uh, think of our per student uh, score by tag uh, um, reports that we currently have. This kind of provide a more classroom centric uh, version of this, but also a better way to be able to drill down and, uh, and see how much content of this type students have been exposed to, how, how well they've done within those areas, um, and you know, kind of break it down as you may need. So some early screenshots of how this is looking right now is walking through for a classroom of students. So in this case, Millhouse, Barton, Nelson, uh, across items that have been tagged in certain manners. So fluency, problem solving, reasoning, understanding. Uh, and within a, within a core, uh, for instance, chapter or subject area, in this case, practice math seven, uh, how they've done overall within the first tag of that hierarchy, how they've done, and when you drill down into the sub into the sub tags or sub standards under that, how they did in each of those as well. So it's a very good way to, uh, to provide better functionality for teachers to visualize this kind of, uh, this kind of drill down behavior at a classroom level. So this is in development currently by our reporting and analytics team. Um, and we should, we should be looking at a, a release of this over the next couple of months. The next one is a new hosted uh, website that LearnOSSI will be providing called Console. So this is the start of opening up a little bit more self-service uh, um, things around, around configuration of your item banks, your consumers, credentials, domains, all those kind of things that right now you need to uh, reach out to LearnOSSI support for. 
kind of putting them directly into into your own hands. So in this case, we'll be you'll be able to log in, you'll be able to change which domains are whitelisted, you'll be able to check and regenerate consumer credentials, you'll be able to manage how your item banks are linked to specific consumers. So item bank to the uh, to the consumer credentials that uh, that should be able to access them and the student response storage that goes with that um, and handling advanced user management so the ability for uh, whoever has an admin role within this to be able to set things like uh, like user management management rights within the author site those kind of areas as well so uh, we're also kind of looking at uh, different modules to add into this one of the things that we we have in the in the first round of this is beta uh, is some really good summary information about the type of content that you, your teams have created so far. Uh, you know, kind of who the who the biggest authors in your system are, the most standard tagged content, the most common question types, the kind of information that helps you better understand, you know, kind of the, what you what you've been creating, uh, and uh, and the value you're getting uh, at Alernosity, as well as looking at modules around uh, kind of easy to use item analysis reporting. Uh, in this as well so you know a nice visual mod module to help you fetch out information around how your items are performed kind of the item analysis report that we've covered in previous uh, in in previous webinars but in this case done through a really really visual really easy to use self-service module rather than a data API element so we're currently you know in the final phases of uh, of completing this what we'll start to look to do soon is uh, is reach out to some of you guys as closed beta users uh, you know kind of give you access to it but also hope you know kind of discuss with you guys and get some um, get some really really close feedback around using the tool and how you how you found it and how you uh, what you found that was good what you could really use within it uh, and then be opening it up to the larger Learnosity client audience after that. Uh, one other new piece that we're adding in here which is one we've had a number of requests for and again, this is in the final stage of development. I think this is coming out next sprint uh, in the latest question editor v3 release is inline image resizing. So really easy for people to be able to resize images visually rather than having to click in and go and set widths and uh, dimensions manually by pixel width. So you're just gonna be able to take one of these elements here, be able to drag and resize it, edit the image, delete it straight from there. So that'll provide a lot more power to uh, power to your authors to be able to get the get content looking exactly as you as you uh, feel it should so that's a quick summary of our of our q1 releases and what we have coming down the line with a couple of uh, a couple of major sections there uh, i'd like to at this stage just open it up and see if we have any questions that have come in over the uh, over the last little while so i can see a I can see a few ones here so uh, let me just have a quick look through. So I can see a few here for a couple here from um, Jeffrey Katzman related to how to use taxonomies to align standards uh, with with content. There there aren't any particular enhancements around around that in this in this release, other than the the main area that I think may be of use there would be the tag hierarchy structure and the um, and the piece of that that comes into the author API. So we do have the ability to set up uh, tag hierarchies um, and then be able to provide a visual element in the author API that allows you to search and drill down through that. At the moment, it is just for searching. We haven't yet expanded that to uh, uh, to actually to using that as a, as a mechanism to tag items within that, though. So it is much more for for searching through existing content rather than aligning uh, aligning content while authoring. Uh, just to, just a note as well, because uh, I can see a question here around um, around being able to get the video after the webinar video will be emailed out to uh, to everybody who's on it uh, after this as well. Are there if there are any other questions, I'll just leave it for one moment in case anybody wants to type any into the into the webinar or into the GoToMeeting webinar question section. Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Um, thank you very much all for your time. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again over the next couple of months and uh, also into the, the quarter two webinar after that.